<laughs> Welcome to session four of our um, CIMA, IBTC's CIMA Get Connected conference. The conference is aimed specifically at um, South African and Southern African students who are studying SEMA, I always feel that um, we are quite at the bottom of the globe, globe, if the globe had a top and a bottom, and we are often quite far removed from um, SEMA UK and from UK providers and what is happening um, on, not on our continent, <clears throat> in the rest of the world. And especially with um, uh, with the pandemic, we've become quite isolated, and I thought this is a great opportunity to remind us that we are studying a global qualification. Mm -hmm. And part of that is that we, through IBTC, you are all connected to a global tuition provider of such high standard and um, unsurpassed pass rates, which is BPP. This session might not aim to explain the relationship between IBTC and BBP, but what I can say is that we have a strong and, and healthy relationship. We search the globe for the provider with the best consistently better pass rate than um, uh, uh, on, on the globe, and that's how we found BBP. And then our mission was to bring that quality to um, the continent, to Africa and South Africa, uh, to make global qualification available locally. So I am going to hand over to Nicola at this point. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I'll probably, oh, my light's not great today, I apologise. Uh, I'll probably start with video and then turn it off again just for the session and then and bring it back just in case I cut out. Um, I love what you're saying about global. It, it couldn't be more true. Today specifically, um, uh, one thing I love about working with SEMA because it's such a global com qualification is that I'm literally just off working with uh, the European SEMA uh, HQ and supporting uh, the students in the European market. We're running some stuff towards uh, the, the case study for them there. So I, I love being able to work with students around the globe. So not just the UK, not just Europe, South Africa, uh, but I've got a special place in my heart for, uh, for uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, having spent lots of time there. So I, I love working um, with this sort of stuff and we love working with IBTC because they're fab. So when we was asked to do this, um, we basically said, what sessions do you want? And we will deliver. And um, today's session is all about how to pass SEMA faster. Uh, and I'm going to just turn off now uh, and uh, you will hear me um, and then I'll, I'll jump back on and show my face again at the end. Uh, bear with me. Okay, um, a little bit, I haven't really talked about what I do. So I am head of SEMA programs at BPP. So anyone that was uh, here at the sessions yesterday will know a little bit about what I do, uh, but I'm uh, basically responsible for making sure that SEMA uh, stays world leading. We, we have uh, exemplary pass rates. They're consistently above global averages, 20 to 30% above global averages, often much higher. And they've got to stay that way. Um, and we've just keep innovating, keep staying ahead of the game, just as the qualifications do. Um, and we work really closely with SEMA for that. Um, so that feeds down into materials, uh, and those are hard copy materials or online materials and all sorts of materials that you, you'll, be, you'll be faced with, but also the tutors at IBTC, um, and also uh, the tutors that you will uh, you'll meet from BPP, uh, as well as part of your IBTC courses. Sorry, I'm just sharing my screen, which is why I'm stuttering a bit, which hopefully you can see now. And um, and yes, so that's a little bit about what I do. Um, and I work really, really closely with SEMA to do this um, across lots of markets, which is super. So today we're going to chat about how to pass SEMA faster, because we don't really want to dilly-dally. <laughs> we could. Some students take years and years and years and years to pass SEMA. Um, and that's fine if that's how long it takes for you to do and if that works for you. But most of us want to just get going with our careers and see qualification as the platform to, to wonderful things. And it really is. And so working with a learning provider like IBTC, supported with BPP, can help you get passed faster. And I'm going to talk about that today. So 
So I'm going to chat through four simple steps uh, as to how you can pass faster. So I'm going to start at the end, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, so really going to discuss why it's important to book your exam date early. Before you've even started your course, book your exam date. Uh, after that, we're going to plan, plan, plan and plan again. Um, you're going to know what you're going to study, how much time you've got to do it. Um, but don't worry, that's where IBTC and BPP are here to help you to make sure that we can we can get you through that for you because planning is, uh, is a lot of work and we like to do the hard work for you so that you could just do practice for your exam. Practice makes perfect. Practice, 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 practice. You don't become an expert overnight, sadly. So you need to take what you've learned and practice it. And here we're going to discuss effective question practice. OK, so it's all about being effective, which means we're going to use our time better. We're going to pass faster. And finally, asking for help. One key thing to know that when you do use the tuition provider, you're not alone. Support comes in many, many ways. And we're just going to remind you of all the different ways that they come in. So let's start at the end, as it were. Key phrase here, book your exam. And we tend to nag students on that constantly. Um, you know, it, it's something that's really important. When you set goals, we've seen this acronym, you've probably seen it in your SEMA studies or in previous studies about setting SMART goals. So as part of that, you've got to be specific what you want to, what you want to achieve, what you want to pass your SEMA exams. Is it measurable? Yes, pass, fail. I'm not talking about fails, we're going to focus on passing. Is it achievable? Absolutely, if you start at the right level and work up. Is it realistic? Yes, just needs a little bit of hard work and support, which we're here to do. And the most important one is time bound. And this is something that we want to talk about, setting the exam date. Um, so we would recommend that sitting your exam approximately two or three weeks after the end of your course uh, is the ideal time and that gives you the chance to sort of undertake all your final exam preparations and your final revision um, and also you'll be sitting the exam while your knowledge is fresh, you don't want to leave it too long. Um, but it's not just that, so students who sit the exam in this two to three week period uh, don't just sort of keep focused, they actually have better pass rates on the analysis that we've done across many years on many different qualifications not just SEMA um, but specifically SEMA um, pass rates are better as well because you keep on track and you, you sit at a good time while it's all nice and fresh. So we also know that students don't have a target date very often delay their exam until much later um, that's a real challenge and it's really easy to put something off if you haven't fully committed and that is probably one of the the biggest reasons that students take longer to get through their SEMA qualification than they really need to and we want to get past this faster for you and for us. Nikki, um, I understand this is something IBTC really takes to heart, is that correct? <laughs> yes, Nicola, we, um, we actually employ staff to get exam commitment dates from our students, um, especially our part-time and our distance learning students. Um, you know, we just believe that once you've committed to a date, it's easy for you to stick to it. And, and it's also easy if we help you to stick to it. Um, and every Friday, the whole company comes together and all, all the people on that team. And then we measure the number of exam commitments that each of the staff got from their students that week. And um, it's no surprise. One of, our, one of our values is actually results. And we love measuring everything. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what we feel is our role as a tuition provider to make sure that we help you along and for that reason we we as you say it's super important to start with the end in mind I think it's brilliant I think we need to start measuring exam commitments from students <laughs> <laughs> we, it is something that we we also struggle with and um, I think we're, we're sort of quite a big outfit um, so sometimes um, it, it is tricky to, to get that but um, yeah we just end up just nagging 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 <laughs> and um, we even for a while had had an extra step on our achievement ladder which I'll talk about and for those of you at IBTC mm, you'll be familiar with the achievement ladder <laughs> to say let us know you've booked your exam what's the date <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it yes. wasn't just a yes tick box but um, yeah um, the, the results speak for themselves those people that have an exam set genu genuinely do pass quicker and genuinely do um, achieve better results and so that's why it's in here that's why it's important um, so once you've started at the end you've got your exam booked 
Uh, then we're going to plan, 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 plan. So you've set your date. You need to plan everything. It's a big life event to see my qualification. So think of it like a wedding. That's a big life event. You wouldn't enter into a wedding without planning, 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 planning. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> plan to death. We love a bit of planning, don't we, Nikki? <laughs> we do. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where we help. So I'll talk a little bit more about that bit as well. Uh, so the better plan the event, then the better the end result. So take each SEMA exam seriously. Plan your time carefully. Um, but think of IBTC and BPP like two fabulous wedding planners. OK, we're here to make it easy for you since we love it so much. Uh, so make a study timetable and stick to it all right it's old school you've probably been doing it since some um, since school and some people maybe you know maybe you haven't done that or you haven't bothered but maybe try it again just humor me try it and see if it works because you know you might be older and wiser now but it might be something that fits in with busier lives than perhaps when you were younger uh, make the timetable and stick to it that's really important as well use it be accountable to it keep your studies on track schedule in your teaching sessions um so the great thing about ibtc courses is they're scheduled at a really good pace funnily enough we thought about it <laughs> just put some random dates in uh, so they're scheduled to make sure you're progressing at a really good pace not too fast but not too slow either um, also, you'll get study guidance provided. So your study guidance includes recommended times to complete stages of your course so that you can slot in all the other bits around when you're going to be doing your teaching sessions, when you're going to be working on your question practice, when you're going to be doing some uh, recap and revision or some extra reading or whatever else it is you need to do. Um, we've got that there so you can plug it into your study timetable. So, um, the key thing is then you will end up with a study plan that's tailored to you. So even if you're all in the same course, you've all got different things on at the weekends, different things on at the evenings, perhaps not at the moment. It certainly doesn't feel like that. But um, it'd be nice just for you to, to just have that visibility and accountability to know whether you're keeping on track or not. So if you do have a lazy week, you can recognise that and maybe have a busier week the next week and really sort of really, really just be accountable to your own studies. It, ultimately, it's you, you that's going to get yourself through this exam but we are here to help you. I always like the saying, um, what is it? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That's uh, a good one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have that in here as well. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree. Yeah. Um, super, right. I think we've made the point about planning, but I do think it's just ultimately just very important. Um, but not as important as number three, and this really is probably the most important thing. Uh, once you've started to learn all your new accounting standards or your management theories and all that lovely stuff, it's all in your head, um, but you need to practice using them in the exam. You may recognize Gary Blair, um, a very famous South African golfer. I'm sure one of you two, <laughs> you recognize him. Uh, he's won 165 tournaments on six continents over seven decades and famously stressed that he wasn't lucky. So the more I practice, the luckier I get. I love that phrase. It's so true. You make your own luck. Okay. Um, so the more you practice, the luckier you will get. So practice makes perfect. So the key to success, as we've established, and in this case, specifically exam success is practice. But what are you practicing? Specifically, again, it's question practice, and it is never too early to start practicing questions. Um, it's an absolutely core feature throughout a lot of our teaching methodology and also the build of our online resources and our learning and our support. It's all about practice and effective practice. Um, for those of you on BPP courses, sorry, that's a lie. For those on IBTC courses and BPP courses, because we all use the same stuff. <laughs> As Nikki said, my stuff's your stuff. My resources are your resources. We're all using the same thing. We call it the hub. IBTC call it the online portal. Uh, but this is where uh, you will access all the practice um, support that you're going to be using. So there's loads and loads of question practice built into this. Um, 
Mm. Yeah. If you want to ask me a question. <laughs> when you, I when you, <laughs> no, uh, maybe I just want to say something, Nicola, at this point. I think what I really loved about the, the BPP hub, which we call the online portal, is the richness of it. I think it is, it's, it's quite unbelievable. It's got, and it's got the, the video lectures in it, which is the best BPP lecturer. And that's easy to establish. You pick the one with consistently the highest pass rate and record that lecturer or record that tutor and then put that on the hub. And then everybody can benefit from that class. And um, then you put the practice and apply questions and the step questions on there. And there's, there's this um, sea of questions, all with slightly different func functions. So you've got all those, the, the, the two key resources in there as a minimum. You have the video lectures and you have your question practice. And um, if we link that to, if you come to our campus classes or you come to our virtual classes, you get access to that online portal. So essentially you can sit in class with Muzi or Kuda or with Nikki Brower, one of our lecturers um, in the evening and tomorrow you can watch a, a BBP lecturer on the hub or on your online portal. And you can do the question practice um, and, and this, the, the progress test and the mock exam. And I believe the um, mock exams are on the same platform as the real exam. Is that right? Uh, correct. It's, it's a replica. So we worked with CIMA to uh, build our own software, which uh, directly replicates it. So every feature of the CIMA exam has been replicated with our software as well. So we've got a phenomenal team of software engineers that work for us. Um, and I work closely with them as well to make sure if there's any changes that there is software development. So uh, there's many strings to my bow, as they say. <laughs> 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 but uh, at the end of the day, I just need to make sure that what CIMA need and what CIMA are doing is totally reflected in it literally everything we do and, and that's yeah, one part of yeah. it yeah and then that model where you would would have a south african uh, lecturer and then a bbp lecturer if you like or or actually offline and online is some people refer to that as the flipped classroom so you come to a real classroom and then you go home and then you also have a digital classroom and i think it's very appropriate for our time right now um, so I'm keen to, I think the next thing you're going to do is delve a little bit deeper into what that online portal looks like and what it does. Sure, definitely. We love our online portal. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of love in this. Um, here's the basic structure. So again, like yesterday, I'm sort of focusing a little bit on uh, our objective test questions. We've got a specific session tomorrow from uh, one of our case study, the case study guru, Dave Halford. He's going to talk specifically about case study, but it's, it's a very similar setup. So the structure of our hub, our online portal, is around the achievement ladder steps. And it, for a BP, that, that is the heart of what we do. The heart of our approach is um, our achievement ladder steps. So within each step, what you have is some learning content. You also have some practice questions. And it culminates in an assessment which brings your learning together at the end of that step. Um, then what you do is you work through each of the steps in turn one two three until you eventually reach step six um, when you will be tested on absolutely everything you've learned to date to make sure that you're exam ready so it builds in scope and it builds in size which means you're going to test it on more topics and more questions for every step so it starts off uh, I think 10 questions in the first step right up to a full exam standard mock in step six covering the entire syllabus but we know you're ready for it by then because we've built you up slowly and steadily also because you've done bucket loads of exam question practice by this point. So you'll be really familiar with the format, really familiar with the style of exam questions you'll be asked. And so it's just going to be a case of making sure that you nail that learning content. You know, Nicola, the one thing that I've always, which I think makes this product stand out over every, every other online program is the structure. 
So I have looked at a lot of online courses and sometimes the worst of them is just a bunch of videos and a bunch of tests and PDFs and Word documents that are dumped into an online space. But what you guys have done is add the structure to it to say you start at step one, then you watch this video, then you read that th those pages from that book, then you do these question practice, then you read that content again, then you watch that video, then you do this bigger test. And the way it builds up within the steps and then go from step to step, that structure is actually where the magic lies. Yeah, I, I love it. It just it's really logical. And I think um, for, for the most part, accountants have a bit of a logical side to their brain, not all of them. Some of the best accountants are the ones that can think outside the box, especially when it comes to things like case study. But um, that's why we, we we work hard on making sure that everybody has is learning tailored to their needs. But um, yeah, I think we love a bit of structure, logic, flow, and it's really well thought out. You know, we don't have too much content in steps. We try and make it manageable um, in in, in, in so many ways uh, there is a lot of to and fro and umming and eyeing about how we split topics into steps um, and all sorts you wouldn't believe <laughs> the discussions that we have around it because it's really important to us um, that it's that it's an easy journey for for everyone and it's a logical journey as well um, and then once you get into the steps um, like I say, the, the content is, is sort of siloed off. It, it's, it's, it's sensible. So now we're focusing on this one specifically, step one, but we've got a couple of different topics that we want to tackle on. The lectures are there. The question practice is right there next to it. Actually, I think I've got little red boxes. I do. There's some question practice for you there. So as soon as you've done the learning on that, that topic, we want you to go and do some question practice. And in fact, you'll be practicing as you do your learning. So we talked a little bit yesterday about the tell me, show me, let me try approach that we have. So it's it's really in, in everything we do is all about question practice early on so even as you're learning we will teach you something but we will show you straight away how it's going to be examined and we might show you first of all and then we're going to let you try so not only is it a good learning tool for embedding knowledge but it's also a really good early exposure as to how that knowledge you have just learned is going to come up in the exam and the stuff in our course books is often uh it's arguably not. I was going to say it's often a little bit easier. I think we phased that out now. We used to use a lot of our activities to be slightly less than exam standard. Um, but actually, uh, I think we've actually phased all that out now. And you go straight to exam standard because actually you're ready for it. Um, and um, uh, and so it's great. It's We're just preparing you from, from the, the offset. And I think it's really important. Once That's you've done that, I sorry. I didn't know yeah. that. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, it's it is something that's sort of just evolved, and um, I think it's just as we've gone more and more comfortable with with the concept of uh, mm -hmm. all of the objective tests uh, changing. So when we were implementing the new materials for the two thousand and nineteen syllabus, we thought that that's the way we'd go, um, and it's been it's been really successful, really. Okay. And I think for us, because, questions, you know, it doesn't matter how many questions you have, um, students always want more question practice. And we have currently got a minimum of 550, I think it's gone up to 600 questions per paper. And still everyone's like, can we have some more? Can we have some more? <laughs> so we're like, okay, let's make all our lecture examples, exam standards. That's an, an easy way we can change it. Like, there's some more. <laughs> can we have more? Yep. And we've actually got some more in the pipeline. So watch this space. Um, it's all happening. Um, but but yes, it's really important to us that, that you get exposure to what you're going to see in the exam as early as possible. Um, the great bit, so that is just going to test you on specific topics and obviously in the exam it can just come from any topic area. So we start introducing that early on, so at step one, it wouldn't just be the regulatory environment you see on the screen, there's another sort of area called the conceptual framework for this paper that's covered in step one. And, and the step, once you take that at the end of your learning of this area, you'll get tested on both of those topics. Once you get onto the next step for this one, um, you'll see that there's a couple of other topics you're going to be covering. 
Um, and then what's going to happen is you'll get tested on everything from step one, two, three, and four. So it's just a really good way of building something closer and closer and closer and closer to what you're going to see in the exam. But without scaring you, we wouldn't want to throw a real exam paper at you at the start. Although we used to do that. I used to love doing that with teaching. Um, when we used to do the old paper exams for F1, I just used to put a, an exam script in front of students and actually show you it's not that scary. We just got to work at it. <laughs> So um, yeah, don't be afraid of the exam. We are here to help you. And uh, the earlier you face it, uh, the more the more prepared you'll be. So um, the other fabulous thing, I'm going to keep wittering on about questions and our achievement ladder specifically. Um, once you take your achievement ladder step, you might not pass it. And that's fine. I don't mind at all whether you pass or fail. I just want you to have a go um, for so many reasons. So. The first reason is that if you fail something or if you fail some questions, you will know what you don't know. And I think that's really, really powerful. I think as a student, sometimes we've got a tendency to study the stuff that we like. So say you love non-current assets, for example, this is our a financial accounting paper, financial reporting, love non-current assets. You just want to do loads of depreciation calculations and impairments and all this lovely stuff. And you don't want to do that really horrible accounting standard that you don't want to tackle. And that is obviously not a very effective way of learning. What you need to do is say, all right, I keep failing these questions. These are the ones I need to focus my revision on because when it comes to the exam, I'm going to pass the stuff I'm good at, but I need to make sure that I also pass the stuff I'm struggling at. So identifying weaknesses is really, really powerful. And that is one of the most important things of just trying an exam um failing it. You can take it as many times as you like. It's absolutely fine. Um, we monitor just the fact that people have attempted it and we can see how many attempts you've made and again doesn't phase me in the slightest in fact if I can see you've taken it six times I say brilliant this is a student who cares this is a student who wants to work this is a student who wants to pass um, and that's it what I do know is that students who just attempt the achievement ladder steps have got uh, the better better chances of passing than even our you know our standard BPP students there's a next level up an increment of five or ten percent on top of our pass rates for those who just try so we are always reminding students just to try it humor me <laughs> don't humor me it's actually integral to what we believe in uh, and our whole approach so um so so just having a go at those um achievement ladder steps and, and using them in the way that I sort of say is, is really important. So there's no better approach, I really think. Um, it works and I think, and I hope that's why IBTC have chosen us um, really. Mm. Nicola, the, our past assured promise, which is that you can come back for free if you fail, asks you to do a couple of things. And not from a terms and conditions, oh, we're going to catch you out, but we know that you must do very, there's a couple of things that's critical for you to pass. One of them is to come to most of your classes. And the other one is we always, I'll, I like to say five progress tests, one mock exam. And I have the same, I'm of the same opinion as you are in terms of the progress test. I, I don't want you to do a progress test because I want to see how, um, how well you perform in it. For me, I always call it a sign of life. I can see you are studying. I see you're attempting it. I can see you are present, you are trying. So um, in, our, in our presentations, I, I, I would always say five plus one, do five progress tests, which you call the step <laughs> test and one mock exam. If you want, you know, you cannot attempt your exam if you don't um, do the five progress tests and the one mock exam. So now it's also quite nice to see why I always go on about it and what, how it fits into the steps. The progress test is the same as a step test and then it all culminates into your mock exam. And that's a big portion of um, exam success. I agree. It's quite interesting. I, I know that we've got very, very aligned past assure and, and that's certainly a uh, echoes ours as well um, but just to throw it into your African students we're also a bit meaner and that we ask that you sit your exam two to three weeks after because that's how much we value it so that's how important it is and that's also why um, 
Nikki and the team at IBTC are, are nagging you on that as well. So we're not just saying all this stuff for the good of our health. There's there's real <laughs> rationale. <laughs> and because proof. we know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sometimes it's nice to hear it from someone else, right? <laughs> yes, totally, totally. <laughs> Super. So uh, I think we've got the point of question practice. Uh, the why, the where, uh, there's plenty of it. Um, and uh, and yeah, that's, that's, that's there. Uh, so, Nikki, tell yeah. me a bit more, just so I'm clear, on uh, IBTC, you get unlimited access to a tutor, right? Yes, it's the same, Nicholas, what we discussed yesterday. I say, you know, we have the tutors and the subject matter experts and and the, the people in our team, which I call the handholders, I'm sure they don't, don't like it. I think they're <laughs> student support or exam encouragement or... Um, but we we have all the resources and you might as well use it. So my 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 best position my best is when you overuse the tutor because again I'm just looking for a sign of life. I want an engaged student. Um, it's when a student doesn't ever ask the tutor one question that I get worried. Um, we all also you know we get stuck often and we waste a lot of time going around in circles in our head and getting stressed out and and giving up studying for days i have this lovely story of a um a student who popped into our office and said before your lecturer goes into class can i quickly ask him a question and he said he struggled with it for three study sessions he just can't cannot work this out and <laughs> the lecturer on his way to class leaned over looked at it and said, oh, there's your mistake. Look there, there's your mistake. And then literally seconds and then went to class. Didn't even sit down, didn't even, just within seconds, his problem was solved and he could carry on. So um, yes, uh, ask your tutor for help. The tutor is there. Um, we have all our resources. If you want to, when you can pop into our office again, then catch a, catch a lecturer or mail us. And we are we are just here to help you because our heart is for you and we want you to pass your exam. Oh, I love that. <laughs> we <laughs> we talked a little bit yesterday about shared values, and I think that's another example as well that you know we talk about having an open door policy, even though comically for uh, security, a lot of our doors are locked to the tutor office these days. <laughs> but we're like, we've got an open door yeah. policy. Just come, <laughs> knock on the door. Someone got a door, but. But, uh, we're here for you <laughs> yes, yeah yes. and um, it's so important and I think naturally you'll find um, when when you when you've got a good tuition provider like IBTC and BPP the tutors just just want to help the last thing they want to mm. see is you know we're here because we love teaching we love seeing people pass we love we love the challenges as well you know we don't we don't love seeing you struggle but we do appreciate how hard these qualifications are you know we've mm. for the large part been there in some guise or other and um I, I remember vividly what it was like to be a student studying for my professional qualifications and it was really hard and um I thought that would fade the further into the distance that it went but uh, mm -hmm. no it's as, it's as clear still the challenges I had back then mm. and lessons mm. I learned um yeah. I forgot to mention that we have every every Thursday at six o'clock we have what we call a speak to us session. Then a bunch of us at IBTC, um, sometimes somebody from student services, often a, a, a lecturer and a tutor would jump on the, the speak to us webinar, and we would just sit there and wait for people to to join, and and come and have coffee with us and ask us questions, and. Um, a lot of students just want to listen because sometimes the questions are about exemptions and sometimes it's about music and you help me with my case study or why do I keep failing or why haven't I received my books yet or you know anything any question so it's something that everybody can join you don't have to be an IBTC student you can just come and have coffee with some people at IBTC sometimes it's slightly themed before a case study, we might pull in all our case study tutors and um, then more of the questions could be about case study. But it's actually just for everybody who's on the platform now, you can always access it from our homepage. There will always be upcoming events and said, oh, this SEMA Speak to Us is on Thursday, click on it. 
and you are having coffee with us. The only difference is that you have to bring your own coffee. <laughs> I think that's lovely. Mm. I think the bit where you said you can come along and you don't have to speak, despite the fact it's called Speak to Us event. But, <laughs> but that's where I really love the power of forums as well, because you don't have to engage, mm. you don't have to ask questions, but just even having a scan through, you'll see that that thing you were struggling on, so was somebody else, or so were loads of people. And and it's it's just just that thing about sort of just the more you sort of, get involved and engaged you can just sometimes find out good stuff by accident as much as by 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 purpose and and yeah coming along to these sessions you're only going to learn something um yes totally and that you what I've what I've always also found is always a bit quiet in the beginning of the speak to a session and everybody just wants to listen and hear everybody else's questions but if I want a response I must just start talking about exemptions <laughs> <laughs> Everybody comes out On of the topic. Oh, did you mention exemptions? <laughs> Brilliant. I bet the chat box is going to go mad now. <laughs> yes, we'll change yeah. this into an exemptions presentation. Uh, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's super yeah mm. open door policy just mm. it, it's really it's really powerful and and the forum's just like a perpetual open door um which is super um it's not just that so if you for, for any reason can't get hold of somebody and you can't stop them in the corridor these days well and we hope that, that happens again you, you can have your recorded lectures so I'm, I'm very aware that as phenomenal as your tutors are and I remember my teachers being pretty phenomenal. I also got really tired in class and I switched off because it's just, it's really intensive learning. It's really difficult to learn. We try and get through a lot of material because there is. Um, sometimes you just switch off. Sometimes you're distracted and that's why you're stuck. Um, and so if you can't for any reason get a hold of a tutor instantly or you just feel like you maybe need a bit more support, the recorded lectures are brilliant. And we talked uh, yesterday as well about the fact you can even just click onto it on your mobile phone. So you can even just have your phone there beside you and just go, oh, let me have a look at this question again. It's a non-current asset question. It's activity four. And you can just play it. And you can maybe even just... It might just be a nice bit of recap for you, but it also might just be from a slightly different perspective or they just say something that clicks as well. That's also the nice thing about the recorded lectures. Nicola, isn't yeah. it true that, I hope it's true, my, <laughs> under <laughs> my, my understanding was that one can download the video lectures to your phone so that you can watch it offline. That's a really good question. I've got a funny feeling it's true, but you know what? Let me go and check that out. The thing is, I, I was off on maternity leave until November. <laughs> and yeah. so the hub was launched just okay. as I went off. Um, I, I've got a funny feeling that's true, but I, I'm I, not going to put 100% on that. <laughs> no, that's perfect. I, I, it's the information that I have at the moment, and I think it's quite relevant for yeah. our market because yeah. you are at the office and barring that you got permission from, from your company or your manager, it is then um, feasible for you to download your evening's lectures and then go and watch them um, offline at home and not use your own data like that and you know what I think that is genuinely one of the great things there's so many great things about the hub and I have got a funny feeling that is one but um yes um, I just gonna... saw a comment here Charissa says yes it is true so we <laughs> then know it's true you can do this via the app on your mobile thanks, device Tom, so there thanks you everyone <laughs> I'm learning today as well. <laughs> and then, Nicola, I've got another one. So, yeah, I tell you, so Ulrich says, speaking of exemptions, <laughs> <laughs> what would be the best way to approach the operations case study? Should I have been exempted from F1 and P1 and have done these subject matters years ago? Oh, that's an interesting one. Super. Yeah, yeah I, I like always, it. <laughs> I always feel, Alrich, that um, I don't know what Nicola's position on it, but when it comes to case study, for me, it's key that there's no um, knowledge gaps for the underlying EP and F subject. And definitely what I would do in your case is um, you can buy a, a gateway program for us where we package your, your case study um, course with an EP and F textbook. 
and then you will go through the, the, the study text for the EP and F subjects and just skip all the questions because you're not going to write the OT, but that way you have, especially because you say you've done it so long ago, it will refresh your memory. You can do all your mind maps. You can get on top of all that knowledge and then come to our case study classes or virtual classes. The, the one thing I always say for those who's very, who are very scared of the case study, your job is just to make sure that you know your EP and F content. That's your job. Once you come to our case study classes, our renowned lecturers, Muzi and Kuda and Nikki Brow, Precious, we take we take over, then it becomes our job and we will teach you everything you need to know. But you must make sure there's no gap, no, no knowledge gaps in your EP and F subject. I really hope that answers your question. Yeah, and I echo absolutely all of that. I think that's that's it. Um, and I know that you've just had a session with Clancy who mentions the blueprint, but I think the easiest way for a student to interpret the blueprint as well um especially for your circumstance where you're talking about entering SEMA and it being old knowledge it's just it's just to get that the course book and work through it and the fact that um IBTC offers such a fantastic um bundle like that is it's it's ideal um it, it, quite frankly it's, mm. it's perfect and, and Nicola do you how do you feel about friends helping you were talking about support can one yeah. find support in one's friends? Or Definitely. Are they <laughs> <laughs> this brings it back. This brings it back to to how I studied as well. And and sometimes when I think of the current climate, uh, I think it it's a bit of a sad thing <laughs> about the current climate. But uh, what we used to do is uh, I'd be in college with my friends, and then we'd go and we'd sit in a coffee shop. Oh, those were the days. And we'd <laughs> have a coffee and a cake afterwards, and refuel, and we'd study together in the evenings. And you know, there was always some really strong tutors strong students in the, in the friendship group that would be able to help people out and it wasn't always that they're strong and weak some people got some topics easier than others also if you're on your SEMA journey together it could be that some people are better at some papers than others but um it's also just that same it's similar to that thing of um of not being able to grab a tutor walking by sometimes you, your peer understands it they've got it you know it's a sub it's a it's a question they've already done or it's a topic that they they're really comfortable with so you can just go oh I can't see this is this a really stupid question and uh, there's nothing better when they go yep yeah, that's really stupid you've just missed that three now follow on um so I love studying with friends and you know virtual friends do work these days you could even you know if data's not an issue of course um you know you could you could have a little zoom call with them and study together that way if you want uh, i'm not going to stop you but you know i'm not going to suggest what platforms you use certainly but there are platforms out there um you can have just message groups or, and all the rest of it but i think it's really nice and it's not just for question support it's also just like oh my god i'm finding this subject really hard for xyz reason because you're not the only student that's ever done a SEMA paper. You're not the only person that's ever done that paper. You've actually got people in your network, specifically the IBTC network, that are doing that paper. So you can all whinge about the challenges together. And that's really helpful. And it can help you move on and it can help you support each other. And I just, I think peers are really, really valuable in your studies too. If you can find, if you can find your peers and uh, yeah, that's where studying with IBC will really help you. And just, yeah, love it. I think mm. we've got to the end. So a bit of a recap, we said to start at the end. So book your exam, please do it <laughs> before you've even booked your course no not quite <laughs> know what you're doing and maybe when your course is yeah. and then book it for two to three weeks after and then Nikki and her team will chase you relentlessly so they can get their exam commitments uh, reports out uh plan 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 but remember we are help you, there to help you make the plan so humor me just please humor me and make a study plan even if you scrunch it up and throw it away and decide it's not for you but um if you give it a go you might find it actually works or certain elements of it can um but it's really good for visibility and accountability practice makes perfect make your own luck and study efficiently i don't think we harked that quite enough the efficiency part of doing question practice so if you are reading knowledge and blocks of text you can read it over and over and over and over and over and over and over but that's not going to help you pass an exam question you've got to keep trying 
exam questions. So it's the most effective way to learn how it's applied, to learn the concept itself, to learn what you do and you don't know. Um, question, question, practice. And ask for help. You are definitely not alone. Support comes in many ways. And even if you don't know how to get the support or even, you know, you, you're just like, I need some peers, need some friends. If it is a bit of a lockdown issue and you're not managing to get together, um, you know, anything, go to IBTC, uh, come to the speak to us sessions and uh, and just just get involved and uh, and it will come as well. Um, so I think, I think that's all I want to say, really. I'm happy to take any questions. I want to put my video back on. I feel brave enough. So if I, if I cut <laughs> out now, I've done most of my important wittering. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, totally. Thank you so much. This is um, very insightful. A student yesterday said um, uh, the confidence with, th that you display in in your product, which is now also our product, <laughs> um, gave him <laughs> confidence. And um, yeah, it's, it's it's just good to learn what is behind putting a program together like that 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 yields success. Um, I loved, I loved the bit about question practice. We often say to our students, you know, we believe in the 60, 40 principle and 60% of the time you must study and 40% of the time you must do question practice. And then we love arguing about, is it that way around or is it 40% <laughs> studying and 60% question practice, but either, either way you do it around question practice is key. Um, I once had a student, we also have an exam center and then some students from outside would come and write with us and then sometimes I chat with them a little bit beforehand. I don't actually know if that's allowed and I would say, okay, so did you, did you study hard? Did you do all the questions that we gave you in the BBB exam practice kit? And then the student would say, the what? Like, no, you know that other book, the oh. other book with the questions. No, no, I only had the study text and uh, uh, this is, so I always say do all the questions you can get your hands on. I also yeah. had students who over practiced, but then it is because they did the same questions over and over and over and over. And you also don't want to do that. So um, you get the um, exam practice kit and the questions on the, on the online portal. And those are the questions that you must do. You don't need to go look for anything else other than what we gave you. Um, I loved what you said about doing the step test. There's value in finding out what you don't know. And it enables you to identify your weaknesses. Um, and, and I like what you said, we study what we like and what we are good at. And that's also a good way to find out um, what are the areas that you're neglecting. And then finally, the, what I liked is also, because I you know, also just like what, what, we, what we have in common, <laughs> the, uh, the exam attempts that you said, I don't care if you fail your, your step test or your mock exam. And I subscribe to that. I say what I want is a sign of life. I want to see that you're trying and I want to see that you're engaging and just go through the motions. And what do they like to say in America? You've got to trust the process. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so indeed, it is a, it yeah. is a finely designed study process that you that you follow it's not just a bunch of videos and questions thrown into an online space so um i'm going to see <clears throat> if we've got some interesting questions here um i see there's some students that said they've contacted ibdc and we haven't responded yet i do apologize we were allocating work today to our agents and with the conference our inboxes are, are, are flooded and we are very happy and, 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 um, and, and each contact is precious. Um, Pam, we'll do, we'll do work harder tomorrow to <laughs> make sure we get to everybody. We will work as hard as we can to get to everybody. Um, please bear with us. Your interest is very important to us and we want to take good care to make sure we guide you correctly. Um, let's see if there's, Pam says, speak to us sessions now, especially in the beginning of the year and probably again in our second intake, which would be June, July. Um, our Thursday six o'clock slot is also repeated on a Tuesday at four. 
for sometimes people can't make the six o'clock because they're still traveling, then you can actually watch it at four at work. <laughs> so Tuesday at four and Thursday at six, but always the link will be on the homepage. So you can just look at upcoming events and you'll see what's coming up. Um, some questions about online package. Let me see some course fees. We are going to send all of that out. Um, let me just hear this. a new question. What is the average salary bracket for SEMA qualified individual in South Africa? I had it in a presentation, our very first presentation in session one, which was done by Sarah Bax. We have it in there. If you give me a moment, I can quickly see if I can, if I can look it up. One moment. It was on Tuesday, session one. We'll see. Da -da -da -da. Everybody wants to know what salary. I did an interesting exercise, if I now talk a little bit off script, so because part of what we discussed, which is very topical in South Africa, is SEMA in South Africa. Where does it fit in with SICA? And how are we winning ground? And, and how much will I be paid comparatively? Because I wanted to force that discussion because we can't keep quiet about it. If we're going to talk about SEMA in South Africa, we have to discuss that. And in my research, what I found quite interesting is that, um, I hope I, I get it right, is right off the bat with less than a, just newly qualified and no, um, <clears throat> no experience yet, the psycho qualified member might earn slightly more but once you get to two years experience three years experience four years experience it starts to equalize because in south africa the psycho qualification might be slightly more accepted at this point and it is busy changing fast but the moment experience kicks in it doesn't matter if you've gone the local psycho route or the global sema route um, Sharissa has put a link to the salary comparison in the chat. Thank you very much. That is also very clever. And I just, oh now did I open the wrong one? Oh, I probably did. Hang on, one, one, I opened the PDF instead of, okay, coming up. Let's see. Okay, Jesse, we've got something interesting here for you. Um, okay. Oh, I can wonder if I can share my screen. Hang on. Okay, let's see. Is this working? Am I sharing my screen? Yes. Is it? Am I? Okay, great. So here you could see that comparison I was talking about with two years work experience, Saika kicks off with more. But then when you get to four years work experience or more, then the top end of SEMA even starts exceeding what you can earn as Saika. But you see it becomes very much in the same range. Okay. So that was one question well answered with some nice slide and illustration. Um, let me see what else. So more exemptions questions. <laughs> okay, I will, Cameron, just, I'm just going to answer your question after postgraduate diploma in applied accounting, science three, and he said, what level will I start SEMA? I tell you, Nicola, it's one of the, it's one of the biggest, um, question triggers is, is, is when we talk about exemptions. So what SEMA has on their website is a SEMA exemption search and it works really well. And you put in your qualification and tells you what you will be exempted from. Um, you can do that or you can engage with us and we can look it up for you because what we like to do is 
we can then enter into a discussion about what exemptions should you take and what shouldn't you take and why not. And sometimes we don't like it if you take BA2 because it feeds into P1 and maybe with this and that background, it's better for you to, to um, have that Lego piece because they really fit into each other as Lego pieces. And if you if you take exemption for Thanks. something lower down, you might struggle a little bit later on. So, but to begin with, you can either email us or phone us tomorrow and we can advise you on exemptions or you can look it up on the SEMA global website. Um, let me see. There's some questions about work experience. Let me just go to, do we have that last slide? Um, do you want me to share? Yeah, let me share. Yes, that would be great. Um, tomorrow at five o'clock, we have got Premi Chetty and Patrick Jacobs from SEMA South Africa, and they are talking about your practical experience requirements. I can see I have a question um, uh, about about that in the chat. And then Dave Halford, we love Dave Halford. Uh, he's just got such an interesting presentation style and I wouldn't miss that if I were you. At some point, you're going to do a case study for all of you who said, oh, a great case study. Um, join Dave's session and, and I'm sure he will make you feel. <laughs> we once had somebody, when I get feedback on a lecture, we once had feedback and says, oh, um, what was his name? Tandeka made me feel so relaxed. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so it will feel, make you feel very relaxed about case study. He makes me feel like I know it inside and out by the time I've spoken to him. <laughs> He's yes, totally. brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. Um, Janelle is saying a lot of qualification, a lot of employees are looking for CAs and there are very little ads asking for a SEMA qualification. Um, what SEMA South Africa does is they tr they track the trends to see how many qualifications, how many job ads just ask for CA and how many ask for CA or SEMA and they've got some information about um, how that has increased over time in South Africa. Um, they also, they have a multi-pronged approach. They work with um, employers, universities, um, recruitment agents, and um, to promote the SEMA brand in South Africa. And I would encourage you to watch the session one, which will be on our conference experience page um, to learn more about what SEMA South Africa and SEMA Southern Africa is doing in this space to promote the brand. Also remember that you are doing a global qualification and it does, what, what do they, I think they, I always had a number that is 170, SEMA is represented in 177 countries, but I heard Trevor say it's 180, more than 180 now. And I think you can't go to 180 countries in your lifetime, but it's good to know that if you, that you can travel overseas, you can work overseas and that there are so many countries that do value um, the SEMA qualification. Um, yeah, Julie Bossop says, I'm currently in the job market and there are loads of vacancies with SEMA requirements. So there we go. Excellent, guys. We are, we are out of time. Um, Nicola, was this your last session? It is. I might pop in and say hi. And, well, I won't say hi, but I might just see what Dave's up to tomorrow because uh, he's just super when it comes to case study, quite frankly. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So I might mm -hmm. pop in and see what's going on there because I think it looks great. Um, uh, did you enjoy our conference? I really enjoyed it. I think it was so um, insightful and um, I like that we have a like, casual element of it, I must say. It feels like we're really talking to the students. It's good. I, I know I've 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 really enjoyed it. I, it's just always nice to be able to engage properly with students, and especially I think we miss it a lot in the current climate. And um, and I think that's the joy of doing it remotely, is I can do it from anywhere. You know, I'm sitting just outside of Oxford and <laughs> waving to you guys in <laughs> across South Africa and this stuff. You know, and um, yeah, it, it's been really really super, and I, I learned a lot from the uh, the sessions I attended yesterday as well. So. Um, I love it. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me and uh, good luck with tomorrow. I hope the rest of you uh, will join and, and have a great session or two.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. I can't thank you enough. It's been great working with BBP. I think it is taste to the strength of our relationship. And um, thank you for, for making such, uh, they say leading edge, but I want to say bleeding edge um, <laughs> resources available also for us so that we can benefit from it. Yeah, we, we keep trying. Yeah, no fantastic. Okay, guys, I think we are over time. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending. As I said, for those of you who might have missed it, we have a, we continue the conference on our um, on our conference experience page, which is a landing page where we will put all the recordings we've had. Um, <clears throat> plenty on what do I do if I fail. We've had Sarah Bucks on um, SEMA in a South African context. We've had Trevor and Nicola on um, why study SEMA, what is the global relevance of it. And tomorrow we've got practical experience requirement and case study. Um, thank you for joining us tonight and I bid you all farewell.